Hey everyone! In this video, I want to talk about DIE-PE, which stands for Dynamic Position Extrapolation. So, it is a method that will push flux models to generate 3K and 4K images. In this video, let's see how we can use this method to create 3K images with flux. So, let's switch to Comfy UI. To use DIE-PE in Comfy UI, we need to install a custom node called Comfy UI DIE-PE. Use the Comfy UI Manager to install it. Let me show you. Open the Comfy UI Manager, then again open the Custom Nodes Manager, then search for Comfy UI DIE-PE. Here, we got a lot of search results. This is the one I am using which I already installed. And guys, make sure you are installing from the same author as mine, who is Wildminder. Because I already installed it, let's close the Comfy UI Manager. The workflow I am using in this video is available for download. Check the description. In this workflow, I am using the FP8 scaled model of Flux 1 Crea Dev. The other main parts of this workflow include the DIE PE for Flux node that comes from the custom node we just talked about. The DIE PE for Flux node is added between the model and the K sampler. Also, there is a Sage Attention node between DIE PE for Flux and K sampler to speed up the generation. Now, let's talk about the values of DIE PE for Flux. The creator of this custom node says width and height are buggy, so you should keep values below 1024. Then we have the option for choosing the position encoding method, yarn, NTK, or base. I think yarn is better for upscaling, but you can also try NTK or base. Next, there is an option for enabling and disabling die PE. Then there is the die PE exponent option. It is recommended that you use 2.0 for 3K, 4K, and higher generations. You can also try using 1.0 for 2K, 3K image generations. I suggest experimenting with these. Then we have the base shift and max shift options. I am using the same value as the die PE exponent for base shift and 3.0 for max shift. From my experiments, I think having the base shift and die PE exponent set to the same number sometimes solves extra finger problems, but I cannot always guarantee that. I suggest playing with these settings. Then the output resolution I am using in the empty SD3 latent image node is 3K. There are also other resolutions we can try. Some say that using a resolution where the width and height are divisible by 64 gives better results. I have included some resolutions in my workflow that you can try. In the K sampler, I am using a fixed seed and steps are set to about 20. You can try higher step values. Now, let's generate an image and see the result. The generation is finished. Let's take a look at the image. At first sight, the image looks good and the small details appear well rendered. However, if we look closer at other areas of the image, we can find some inconsistencies. For example, as you can see here, the wooden table is having some serious textural problems, including planks that aren't connecting properly. Then, there are some inconsistencies around the wood stove and fire. I'm also unsure what that arch structure is all about. Overall, as I said, the image looks nice. It is because of dye PE that we are getting this level of quality. If we had not used dye PE, the image might have been more of a mess or garbage. Now let's try another prompt. I'm going to copy this prompt and use it for the next generation, but this time I will change the seed value. Now, Let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is completed. Let's take a look at the image. I'll open this image in a new tab. Like before, the image looks fine at first sight, but if we look closer, we can find several inconsistencies. Her right hand has an extra finger and her left hand's thumb looks unnaturally long. Also, the bow and arrow are having some intersection issues and she is not holding the arrow correctly. Her face looks fine, but I think her body anatomy looks unnatural. So yes, the dye PE method is not 100% perfect. It has some issues. The generation time is also quite high. What do I think about dye PE overall? I believe it is a nice technique, but it currently comes with some problems. Perhaps in the future, the creators will improve the method or introduce a better alternative. For me personally, I think it's better to generate images at the native resolution that the Flux model supports and then upscale them using upscale models or the high-res fix method instead. So what do you guys think about this video? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.